മൊഡ്യൂൾ ട്വൻറ്റി ടു പിയേഴ്സൺസ് കോറലേഷൻ സെക്ഷൻ വൺ പിയേഴ്സൺസ് കോറലേഷൻ പിയേഴ്സൺസ് കോറലേഷൻ ടെസ്റ്റ് അസോസിയേഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ടു റാൻഡം വേരിയബിൾസ് സോ ലെറ്റ് എസ് എ എക്സ് ആൻഡ് വൈ സോ ഹൗ ദീസ് ടു വേരിയബിൾസ് കോ വേറി ഓർ ദ അസോസിയേഷൻ ഓർ കോ റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് സോ ഇറ്റ് മെഷേഴ്സ് ഓൺലി ദ ലീനിയർ കോറലേഷൻ ദറ്റ് ഈസ് വാട്ട് ദിസ് പിയേഴ്സൺസ് സിമ്പിൾ കോറലേഷൻ ഇസ് ഓൾ അബൌട്ട് സോ ഇഫ് ദ റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് ഇസ് നോൺ ലീനിയർ the test cannot measure the non linear relationship so the correlation is also known as covariation what are the hypothesis being tested in this pearson's correlation the null hypothesis is that there is no linear correlation between two variables while alternative hypothesis is that there is a linear correlation between two variables so these two variables are usually continuous variable so if these variables are categorical variables we already explained uh, pearson's uh, you know the chi square test is the best test for a categorical variable which is a non parametric method while pearson's uh, correlation is a parametric assessment for continuous variables so these two are the hypothesis for the the pearson's correlation but before doing this one there are a set of assumptions there are 10 assumptions for pearson's correlation so t- this test is kind of uh, highly parametric so uh, if these assumptions are invalidated you cannot do this pearson's correlations what are these assumptions random samples paired samples so the pair each x each value will have x and y measurements for example if you measure the blood pressure and uh, blood glucose level so for the same subject so that way it has to be paired sample sampling from one population so it has to be from one population so if you are sampling from multiple population with different different distribution now it cannot be done then uh, observations have to be independent it should not be a dependent uh, observation so for example that the twins not possible for that x values are not used to compute y value so this should not be intertwined that's very important so if you calculate the y value from the x value some transformation uh, you know or percentage conversion this you cannot use it this way so values are not intertwined sixth assumption is that x values are not experimentally controlled here this is correlation you are measuring both the values there is no control so x values as well as y values are just being measured it's nothing is controlled had you been controlling the x values then that the real test is going to be the regression not the correlation seventh assumption is that both variables follow gaussian distribution so if the distribution is not gaussian then pearson's correlation is not a good test for you so that is why this is a parametric measurement all core covariation or correlation happens in a linear uh, you know scale so that is why it is a linear regression if the correlation is not a linear way then uh, pearson's correlation will not uh, reveal the collinearity then another assumption is the no outliers in it so if there are some outliers you should do grubs test or uh, route method to find the outliers and you have to remove it prior to doing this pearson's um, correlation then the data of course has to be accurate so these are the set of assumptions let us consider one example so this example is about the insulin sensitivity versus you know the percentage of long chain carbon fatty acids so c20 to 22 so 22 molecules of the carbon such a long chain unsaturated fatty acids on the membranes of skeletal muscles so it is a interesting study that we have caught it in the uh, you know the further readings as well so is there any correlation between these two factors the first factor is lipid content of the skeletal muscle membrane the second one is the insulin sensitivity so these are the readings as you can see here so first of all before attempting to do a correlation let us simply plot an xy scatter plot so each dot represent one measurement i mean one individual whose percentage of a lipid level versus the insulin sensitivity so you it's immaterial on x axis and y axis which variable you choose it could be y axis could be insulin sensitivity while x axis could be uh, uh, you know the lipid content of the membrane or vice versa but still if the arrangement of these dots looks like linear so you know uh, as if it's a linear or roughly linear then you can say that there is a positive correlation what does that mean 
So if one the x as x increases y also increases or x decreases y also decreases. So it could be either uh, uh, you know going towards a positive slope or a negative slope both are linear correlation. So to calculate the Pearson's correlation which is very similar to the way that we calculate the standard deviation you know. So first of all we have to find there are two variables you see each one we have to do it separately. First of all the first variable or x variable the other one is y variable right x variable we have to find the mean of this variable then the mean or arithmetic mean or average right and you also have to find the standard deviations of both this variable right. So subtract the group mean from the respective value that is what the deviations from the uh, values you know from the mean. So for example x minus mean you have to calculate then y minus mean the mean of the group y. So x values subtracted with mean of the x the entire x variable then you also have to calculate y values subtracted with mean of the y variables. So the next step is to standardize these uh, distances I mean distance from the mean by dividing with the respective standard deviations. Then finally multiply the two standardized distances at each data point. So you just have to multiply both of these standardized distances. So standardized distance means distances divided with standard deviation. Finally you have to calculate the sum and divide the sum with n minus 1. So that is the formula which we use for uh, uh, Pearson's correlation is 1 divided by n minus 1 multiplied with sigma that means summation of everything you know that is basically x i minus x bar that is the average of the x divided by standard deviation of the x multiplied with y minus y bar divided with the standard deviation of the y. So that way you can calculate. So it's very easy if you can do a semi-automatic calculation instead of uh, you know doing on a piece of paper you can simply open up an excel and you can do you can feed this data the first column will be let it be x then on the bottom you can calculate standard deviation and average of all this uh, you know the x as well as y. So what I'm saying is for the x so x you uh, just plot everything then the each value subtracted with the average will be our next column then the third column will be this differences divided with standard deviation would be the next one you know and similarly for the y as well. So these two standardized differences you have to multiply that will be the last uh, column and sum of it will be the you know the everything inside the summation sign uh, you know on the right side of the summation sign in the equation. Finally you divide that sum to value with n minus 1 which is nothing but degree of freedom. So the calculation is very simple and intuitive and you can also perform this totally automatic as well with a number of software like uh, 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 Graphpad Prism or uh, Microsoft Excel can calculate these kind of calculations easily. The another kind of correlation is known as Spearman's correlation which is a, uh, you know which is a non-parametric method uh, because it doesn't actually depend upon the distribution you know the frequency distribution at all so of the population from which our samples come from. So this adds just additional stuff in the first okay in the beginning they just have to rank order it and then calculate everything almost similarly but we are going to explain the Spearman's correlation in module number 25. So finally once you do the, the correlation you are going to calculate R that is correlation coefficient which I just told you about. So if you do this calculation you are going to get R value of 0 0.77. So you are going to get a summary table the correlation result table. So you should know how to interpret this value 0 0.77. The first question is that is it a positive or a negative value? Of course it's a positive. So there is a positive linear correlation between two uh, random variables. So that means if the value of one variable increases value of the other variable also increases you know positively. So that is what it means. And now second question is that this r how close this value is to 1. 1 is perfect linear correlation. So 0 0.77 means it's pretty good correlation you see. Then you can also calculate the 95 percentage ci of this one. So that means that between uh, these two ranges 
that 95 percentage of the time the true population you know the the population pearson's correlation coefficient will fall between these two uh, range or between these two error uh, bar now another thing is called r square r square means uh, coefficient of determination or simply r squared so perhaps more important than r is r squared so r square here is simply is just square of this r so r square in this value is 0 0.5929 what does that mean so it is that means around 59.2 percentage is uh, you know the covariation so that means that 59 percentage of x variable uh, you know is uh, associated with variations in y you know uh, y variables so and vice versa so it could be on both ways so it is extremely important to see uh, you know that the the, uh, the r square value finally there is a p value as well so p value should, you should not take it at the face value because p value is highly skewed estimate which i told you about but here the p value is 0 0.0021 that means that uh, you know it's the results are quite significant but you will always have to look the r square value so interpretation of the r or the pearson's correlation coefficient is quite straightforward as i told you it's always between minus 1 to plus 1 you know so if it's close to plus 1 or minus 1 that means that it's quite linear and positive r means positively correlated while x that means x increases y also increase linearly negative r means that they are negatively correlated that means that when x increases y decreases linearly you know so that is uh, what it means the, the negative correlation mean while what does that mean zero zero means that there is absolutely no correlation at all variables do not vary together so there, there is no covariance of these two variables so one or minus one that means that it's perfect correlation it's just straight line you know so that is what the one or minus one means so as i told you r squared or the coefficient of determination is a fraction of the variance shared between the two Vari uh, variables so in our example the r squared is 0 0.59 that means 59 percentage of the variance are shared between the variables so note that when you square a positive fraction the result is a smaller fraction r squared is always between 0 and 1 see r is between minus 1 to plus 1 but r squared is always between 0 and 1 it's a fraction more close to 1 means stronger correlation 59 percentage of the variability in insulin tolerance can be explained by or is associated with variability in lipid content and vice versa that vice versa is extremely important if you do a correlation you will never know that what uh, you know what is actually affecting the change in the other variable x versus y or y affects on the x which we don't know so 95 percentage ci of the r can be calculated we are not going in detail how this can be calculated but it uh, you know that the range measures the accuracy of the sample with respect to that of the population the the, the correlation coefficient so 95 percent ci is always asymmetrical as r cannot exceed one so it is more asymmetrical when it's further away from zero or when n is small when the size is small or when it is approaching one then the asymmetry is become uh, a lot more obvious what are the common mistakes here the correlation does not mean correlation or the causation you know correlation does not mean causation that is extremely important and that is the same thing which we explained earlier as well that is called statistical confounding so for example in our earlier example a positive correlation could mean several things so positive correlation means that insulin sensitivity caused or determine lipid content of the skeletal muscles is that the case insulin causes insulin sensitivity causes the the lipid content or vice versa the lipid content of the membrane cause you know the or determine the insulin sensitivity the third one is that both insulin sensitivity and lipid contents are influenced by a third unknown variable you know that is exactly that is what is known as statistical confounding and the fourth one is that the observed correlation is just by the chance of course you can never uh, you know uh, avoid this problem as well at 95 percent confidence interval that means that five percentage uh, there are error chance of error is still there so it could be just because of the error you know
So there's a very famous quote by Stephen Jay Gould, the famous Harvard evolutionary biologist. The invalid assumption that correlation implies cause is probably among the two or three most serious common errors of human reasoning. So that's very, very important. The correlation does not mean causation. We should also avoid overemphasizing the p-values. As I told you, p-values are a highly skewed measurement because the p-value is very easy to get p-value with uh, astronomically high uh, sample size. One good example is that, uh, you know, the war veterans, returning veterans, American veterans from Vietnam War. And there, were, there had been a very interesting study about their IQ level with the sperm health. So the study, uh, you know, analyzed the three parameters against the IQ, the intelligence level. So intelligence level versus, you know, the, the log of the sperm count per ml. So per ml, how many sperm is there? So is there any uh, correlation between these two things? You know, intelligence level and uh, log of the sperm count in one ml. And another uh, correlation which they checked is that is there any correlation between IQ level and uh, you know the log of sperm count per ejaculate so the total number of the sperm count per ejaculate is there any correlation and the third one is the fraction of the sperm uh, you know uh, motile sperms out of the entire sperm so how much is the fraction over there so these three things they tested and then they got the p-value extremely low p-value you can see that all these are significant result so if you look only the p-value then uh, you know, you will uh, tend to say that there is an extremely high uh, correlation between intelligence level and sperm health. So either sperm mortality or virulent sperms or the sperm count. But the moment you look at the R square values, you will see that all, almost entire thing is spurious because R square is just, uh, you know, 2 percentage. So it, it means only 2 percentage or 2 to 3 percentage of uh, variability of the intelligence is associated with the sperm count. Uh, you know, and uh, that is extremely quite uh, low. So is it biologically significant or not? That is a question so that statistical analysis cannot tell you about. So interpreting the correlation without looking at the graph is also a common mistake. So we first have to look at the graph and then make an uh, assumption. Is it really, does it actually make sense to do a linear correlation or not? For example, in these four graphs, the first one, uh, you know, that means that uh, left uh, topmost one is perfectly fine to do a linear correlation while on the right side you can see on the top right side you can see that there is a correlation but it's not linear so performing a linear correlation makes no sense here and the third one is that you know there are a few outliers you can see so perhaps it's outlier and I told you never take this outlier subjectively just because you think it's an outlier you should never remove it you have to perform uh, appropriate statistical test for it while the fourth one, that is the, uh, the uh, rightmost and bottom right, uh, the one uh, which doesn't even look like a normal Gaussian distribution. No, it might look like a log normal distribution. So performing this kind of uh, linear correlation on that kind of distribution makes no sense at all. So X and Y need not to be in the same unit. So that is another point. So, you know, there is no point if you are, uh, I mean, there is no problem if these are in different, different units. X and Y are symmetrical in correlation. It's immaterial which variable you're assigning X or Y. If you interchange the X and Y, R remains same, so as the R squared value, as well as the P value. Pearson's correlation coefficient is unitless. If X and Y are transformed to another unit, R won't change. However, log transformation would change R. So the log transformation you have to be uh, worried about. R squared is used for the correlation, not capital R squared. So capital R is uh, about the regression while small r is for the correlation. And remember the correlation, you don't really need a best fitting line. So usually that line is a model and the model testing is something entirely different. That is what we are going to discuss in the next module about the regressions. So in the correlation, you need not need any uh, this kind of line, you know, the best fit line. So if you add a best fit line, that is not really a correlation. So in normal correlation, just present the xy plotter and calculate this uh, correlation coefficient and r squared value. So in summary, the Pearson's correlation analysis is used to measure the linear relationship between the two random variables. 
R is calculated by multiplying standardized distances of the two variables at each data point. Non-parametric correlation test of the Spearman's correlation uh, just adds one more step in the beginning uh, that it, it just adds that it rank order it and every operation is based on the ranks. So all are calculated on the ranks, not on the individual measurements. Positive R means the two variables are positively correlated while negative R means that these are negatively correlated. R squared is a fraction of the variance shared between the two variables. Thank you for watching.